Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about stakeholders and technical knowledge. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you explain technical challenges to stakeholders who do not have any technical knowledge or background? Well, uh, usually what I try to do is to explain the impact or focus more on the impact of different challenges and at a high level describe what the impact of certain decisions are going to be or the steps necessary in order to achieve a certain goal and that's pretty much it. It sounds really fluffy but the, something that I see a lot of engineers sometimes be a little bit bad at is to explain sort of why they do the things they do and the same thing when they explain a process or how to execute on something uh, there's not a whole lot of natural well most software developers and technical people are not very very you know they're not born teachers by any means uh, I find it's actually sometimes a little bit painful for me to to sit in on meetings where there's a very technical person who tries to explain the values in doing something and is he or she is doing that to a group of uh, non-technical stakeholders and you can really hear just how everything just sort of falls on deaf ears because they, they simply do not have the ability to speak in terms that makes people realize why things are happening and, or like why we should do a certain thing and many all their ideas are you know they're solid it's just that the way if they present it is so piss poor that it's uh, it never gets through which I think is an important skill it's one of the soft skills that you have to have in order to get anywhere in IT and I've always found that a lot of the uh, software developers who have issues with the social aspects uh, and they have a lot of frustration when they say that oh people don't listen to me and I kind of go no it's actually that they do listen it's just that you don't know how to talk and so that is a skill that uh, you should try to get better at and um, if I gave you an example of, um, there are uh, a few like I've had so many conversations here I'll see if I can think of well, I can give you one example where I had to break down something that to a lot of non-technical stakeholders are go it's going to be a very complicated topic. So basically I was dealing with an integration towards a third party system uh, for one of the employers that I had and so my uh, my boss basically or my product manager comes to me and asks hey Frederick we have this third party like this external company they have this uh, data or like they are providing information to the company and we need to is there some way for us to you know get that that information and sort of automatic uh, streamline more of the work process for the people who like the, the support staff and I said, yeah, sure, uh, we would have to do some type of integration towards their system. And that person, and then very quickly, the product manager asked, okay, but well, what's an integration? Well, basically what it is, is that our system lives, you know, in one part of the internet and their system lives in another part of the internet. And what we need is so that from our system, we need to be able to connect. That's sort of how the internet works. We, our system needs to automatically be, be able to connect to their system and get the data and, and fetch it back to, uh, to the users on our side. But in order for us to do that, what's going to have to happen is that they are going to have to allow our system to connect to their system because you've probably ever heard about that thing we call a firewall where the idea behind that is basically so that you know not everybody who is on the internet can just connect to somebody else's computer and then do whatever they want that's uh, that's really bad so what we need is for them to allow us through their firewall so we can actually connect and he said yeah okay that sounds reasonable enough so how do we how would how do we make progress on this well you have to set up a meeting with them 
and then when uh, we get to talk to them we basically need to present the request and then they're gonna have to tell us how if, if they have support for this because it's not all companies who have like their own software team or something like that a lot of the smaller companies are like non IT companies uh, they usually have either consultants or they have existing solutions or something like that that has limitations so we need to talk to them about like sort of how things look on their end and said and done that's that was very straightforward for my product owner to understand and then we sat down in a meeting we have all these uh, non-technical people from both companies and I sit there as well and that's why I always tell uh, non-technical people just save yourself the fucking time if you're not if you have any type of technical uh, discussion or even remotely possible uh, technical top if it's remotely possible for you to have a technical um, need within a meeting include the software developer ideally the tech lead or something like that because you're just gonna waste time otherwise this I see it all the time I see these managers who like go and take the first meeting and then they talk and then they don't know or a question arises where or not they can do something or how it's gonna work and now they have to schedule another meeting go and talk to the technical guy or girl and then do the whole sh shut out all over again and the worst part is the managers who make plans without talking to to the engineers first it sucks but it's very necessary for software developers to just sit in the room at all times practically when anything, anyone is talking about technical matters uh, but anyway we sit there we have a talk and then uh, I get to talk to the company representatives on the other side and then I use my I basically say hey we would like to make an uh, do you have some type of API or integration that we can make towards your system to fetch this information and then they kind of go uh, well Frederick you have to understand I'm not the technical guy what is an API or like what like I don't know what any of this stuff is and so I go back to basics okay uh, so you have this Excel file that you send to over via email to uh, to the people on our side. Uh, do you have any type of system where we c we can connect over the internet and just automatically fetch that information without you needing to send it through an email? Oh yeah, yeah, we have like something called uh, FTP or SFT, something like that, where like we. We give you give other companies a file, and then they can fetch that file, and we just upload that to like a bucket, and we have like this 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 way that we just put it in a folder, and then it's uh, taken care of. And I go, yeah, that's perfect. Um, that's uh, that's something we would be very interested in because uh, we don't necessarily need to have like a REST API or something like that. A, um, a like a FTP hosted solution like that would work as well because we just need the data and if it's in a file or if it's coming from a database it's not so important as long as we can fetch it uh, do you have any documentation for how we connect to like what we need to do in order to fetch that file and then they sent us over like the specification and as you can imagine it's like an FTP hosted solution so you have a bunch of credential and uh, credentials and then you talk and then I got to talk to, uh, to talk to um, rather they talked to, to their uh, operations staff like the IT support and I said here is a IP address uh, that we're gonna connect from could you make sure that that's gonna be able to connect through to the uh, to the server and said and done that's it and although there are better ways of solving this problem I hope that my little story here gives you an idea of how to how to try how you should try to speak to your stakeholders remove the need for technical terms just explain in very simple terms what it is that you need to achieve and how to go about it because when you do that anybody can understand they might not know how to do things but anybody can understand that for example the code is really bad here and it's very difficult for us to change it so that the, we can make this thing that you want uh, so we would like to fix it or you know we need to be able to connect to that system or we need to be able to 
create more instances of like an application because if one instance goes down and we only have one then the whole website goes down dumbing things down like that is a skill that you should definitely master and it's it's not as difficult as you think so what I want you to take away from this is that the way that I explain to stakeholders uh, who have you know, technical knowledge, how to do things, is that I just dispose of all of the technical jargon. I don't throw around like words like API or REST or uh, you know uh, or what have you to per people that I know they don't know what I'm saying. And usually the easiest way to do that is to focus more on the reasons, like the outcomes of what you're doing and why you want that outcome. Because when you do that, as I was saying in my little story, then you're just explaining the reason, like what you need and why you need it. And you put that in terms that um, the way people understand the value of what you're saying. Because you can't communicate by just saying these technical terms to people who have no technical knowledge. It's sort of like a legal person who is trying to explain, you know, why you have to do certain things or so forth. Uh, if they use their own language it's very difficult for someone who like myself or anybody who doesn't know that stuff to understand it but if they say that well if you don't do this thing or if this thing happens you're gonna have to be you're gonna be fined or you're gonna have to go to prison or something like that that anybody understands so putting it in those sorts of terms is usually at least the way that I do things have a great day